Hi guys, so I am making a roller bender at the moment and uh, I thought I'd bring you along with me so um, let's see how it goes. Uh, I started off by buying uh, all these bearings and stuff. Uh, I got that jack from uh, Halfords that was about £10 uh, and I think those bearings, uh, I think these were about £10 for the two of them and then they were about 20 quid for four of those, something like that. Um, so. Yeah, it's not a lot of money really. Um, I've bought a meter of silver steel as well because it will just go straight through those. Moving on a little bit from there, I um, I got this C-section. I forgot to record in between, but I've got this C-section. I think it's, uh, that, it's that measurement there is 190 um, and that's 75 or something. Um, it's pretty sturdy. Uh, a meter of this weighs about uh, I think it was 25 kilograms or something like that so it's pretty heavy so I bought her a meter of that which was I think about 20 pounds something like that um, maybe 25 I can't remember exactly but so I've drilled all these holes in the top here so as you can see these bearings are going to ride in the top there um, and sort of gives you different positions uh, I've welded these on because they're what goes between the flat plate which I'll show you next um, and uh, yeah so that will all slot in and you'll see what, what happens. This is the flat plate that I was talking about um, this is 130 mil wide um, and it's 10 mil thick so it's pretty sturdy I've drilled some holes in the top for bearings on either side uh, and um, those uh, 10 mil plate uh, 10 mil um, or 10 by 10 uh, steel square bar there that goes that sort of lines it up into this so you sort of see how it goes in a minute that all fits together nicely there that 10, 10 by 10 uh, square bar just sort of retains it in place as you can sort of tell but I put this jack in um, and I found that it wouldn't locate properly uh, so I used some more of that 10 by 10 bulk, uh, square bar that I had and that just holds it nicely in place at least it can't come with it a little bit but it can't go anywhere at least so that helps when trying to line everything up especially when you're trying to um, oops, trying to like jack it up so you've got the bar that goes in there and at least it gives you oops, some clearance on it there so um, so yeah that's good once I'd, uh, once I'd fit the jack in there <coughs> I realised when you've got this um, this sort of sliding piece, the top sliding uh, channel section, the um, I realised you couldn't see to get this in here. It was kind of fiddly. Um, I imagine this is probably going to need to be used on the floor, so it was kind of fiddly and it was frustrating. Uh, and the other thing, um, try, like trying to turn this round, put it in there, and turn that um, to loosen it off, um, it was just not impossible to see. So I have this um, this bar here, a uh, round bar. Um, I drilled a hole in the middle and put a bolt through and then used a um, some heat shrink on it. Um, I have this tube here as well which the bar fits through lovely so um, I just made a little bracket underneath there so that it um, holds it up at the correct angle. That locates on there and it and it just makes it so much easier so at least it all sticks out where you can see it clearly um, so if you're working above you can release it Obviously, with the weight on it it won't do that but with it working above it, um, it's just easy to release uh, easy to tighten and easy to jack all from the side so I was quite pleased with that um, should make life a lot easier I've got this plate I, uh, I cut it to size um, that way even what are you? an idiot sandwich I have drilled uh, four holes in the bottom um, to mount the motor so I'm just going to weld this on now to the uprights. So I've cut the keyway. Um, I used my lathe as you saw um, and it was quite a lot of hard work. Um, the uh, silver steel is pretty hard. It's pretty hard stuff. So, uh, so I just thought I'd show you now. You get to see it in sort of place. So it's uh, very slightly out but not enough to um, cause any issues and it's a really tight fit there's no there's no wiggle in it at all which is nice so um, so yeah it's, it, I'm really pleased with that so first off I've paid, painted all the parts I used navy blue from Halfords um, it's making it look a bit weird in this light but it's not that bad and then um, I painted the motor black 
Um, so I just literally need to reassemble it now uh, and wire the box in. So I try not to uh, hinder in the way here, but I put some uh, tape and some spaces over the uh, wheels, uh, over the uh, rubber pads. So take these off and stick them down properly. And I've got some smaller screws. I put some uh, I put some temporary longer bolts in just so I could um, space it away and paint round the uh, feet. I, don't, I did underseal it. Uh, I undercoated it before I um, before I painted blue, but it doesn't really matter about this. It's all underneath, and you're not going to see it, so I'm not concerned. It's just so heavy to move this piece. It's, it weighs an absolute ton. Right, that's good then. I left these all bolted up um, just because it's making it easier for me to put it back together and I put all the washers back in place where they need to go. Uh, the holes are M10 but I've been using M8 because it gives a little bit of movement with the... Um, it just gives a little bit of movement so I can try and square it all up. So. Quite important that you only give it about 10 ugga duggers. If you give it too many you might break something off but what you could do is break one off and then just give it like count how many ugga duggers you give it and then just give it maybe one or two ugga duggers less and then you won't break the next one off so that's the other thing you could do. Handy little tip for you today. So for these ones um, I'm not actually tightening them down all the way as you can see. Oh, well, that one I just need. So when we put the shaft through and the motor on, it's going to, um, it needs sort of, it all, uh, I wouldn't say tramming, but it all needs putting them together and tightening up together. Otherwise it can pull, the motor can pull very slightly one way or the other. So at least if you do it like that, it doesn't pinch on anything. You don't want any sort of actual load on something that you can avoid. Um, obviously these bearings are taking an actual load on them, but, um, I think that's the correct term, but they obviously are taking that, that kind of load uh, on the bearings, but if you can avoid having a constant load that's unnecessary, then that also helps. And also, if you want to take the shaft out, you can take the shaft out without the load, but if you've got a bit of a pinch on the shaft, it's very hard to get it out. Ask me how I know. I just masked it up and painted what I could. Um, I'm going to have to wire it, but I can do that when it's on there, so... Um, that wire is coming off of it, I'm putting in a different wire. Motor itself is a 400, um, 400 volt. It's a uh, three phase um, and i am adapted it to run on single phase. Um, someone, on, someone on a forum helped me do that um, and he also supplied me with a motor so I very much appreciate that. Right, so that's good. Thanks for put back on. The first two we can put in um, and then we tighten up once they're in. So now that I've done those two bolts, I can throw the motor on. Let's just hold it in place. So I'll just offer these up here now. Tighten up this um, this motor and then that'll, that'll like, line it up a bit. The slide was binding I just used a scraper Ta -da. So I just need to now reinstall it and crack back on with finishing it so this wire that I'm feeding through you probably can't see but just under here that's going to uh, the motor um, so we'll just feed that through now feed that through here now Now we take some small bolts, these are M5s again, I tapped the holes the other day 
and these won't protrude out the other side which is what's really nice I would drop it wouldn't I I've got this box um, I'll show you how it works once I've finished wiring up um, but just because it obviously the motor is quite powerful um, I'm going to I'm going to wire in a little stop switch just to go underneath here so between these toggle switches I can use the stop switch just for my own safety because I'm a bit of a clumsy twat. Oh. So, obviously we've got the stop starter switch here. Um, we have, uh, so this is sort of left to right, this one. And this one either um, like stays on like that or you can hold it and just hold it just to jog it across, um, which is quite good. It just sort of is a bit safer, I think. Um, so right now I've got the steel in there. I'll just lock this up and then the oh, there it is, it's up there. Um, the handle is here to press so I'll try and do it so you can see so I've got my hand through, through it and you just see it going up so now this is going to the to the right oh, stops in so that initial noise is um, there's a um, there's a couple of extra capacitors in there to fire up for the um, uh, to run three phase on single phase, um, and there's a uh, the capacitors um, they're done in a way so that they twice the power to the motor um, to fire up. Um, basically, what we sort of found was if if we didn't do it like that. Um, this is the guy that helped me. Um, he actually wired this up for me. But if we didn't do it like that, the motor was, you was able to stop the motor. Um, and I've actually tried it the other way. Um, tried it without, and it does, like you can stop the motor so easily. So it's much better this way, but we'll go back again. So I'll do one pump on the thing. pump again annoyingly my camera cut out halfway through that um, and I didn't notice because I'm special uh, but so I rung this uh, rolled this ring up, um, they're the flats, um, I think I need to adjust the two bottom rollers though because you can just see it's very very slightly out, hang on, there you go, you can see it's very slightly out um, out of square so I think if I adjust those bottom ones I could square that, that will square that up, um, but it's not enough, I mean you can quite easily, I've got my little noodle arms but I can quite easily straighten it. Um, so yeah, normally what I would do is cut the flats, um, well what I did last time was I cut the flats while it was in situ and then just carried on rolling it um, and I tacked it up as well while I was at it and I could literally just put roll a perfect ring then, like so, this is one I did earlier, um, but uh, yeah so it's, I mean it's really easy, um, I'm so glad it's not one of the ones with a handle on it, um, but I mean, yeah, it's great. It really is. Uh, it's a game changer. Uh, I've got some stuff to make as well. So, um, something. One of the things I need to do to make with it is a sign. Um, so, yeah, at some point I'll be doing that. I might video it and bring you guys along with me. But yeah, until then, thanks very much for watching.